My name is Dan Durley. I play bass in Lurk, uh, and we're on tour with Waster, Hot Mulligan, and Grayscale right now. Uh, we're at Dirty Nellie's in Palatine. So before I got this one, I uh, played a jazz bass, um, an American standard Fender jazz bass. Um, it was actually a friend of mine who lent it to me years ago, and I, I had it for like five years, and he needed it back. Uh, so I finally ponied up for my own. And when I could choose one from scratch, I went with the P bass, because we kind of play music that suits a P bass more than a jazz bass. So um, that's why I went with that. Um, and I've always, I've honestly always just wanted a P bass, so kind of went with that a couple years ago. Bought it from Chicago Music Exchange. I don't mess with it too much. It's, uh, I have pretty much the standard 105 uh, Ernie Ball sling, uh, uh, strings on it. It's got the standard pickups. Um, one of the knobs fell off and I took the other one off because I actually kind of think that looks like harder. It looks cool uh, to have them both just like that. Um, and yeah, I'm gonna be upgrading to the 110s from the 105s soon because it'll be a little thumpier. I'm in standard tuning for almost everything. One one new song we go to drop D on the top, but almost everything is in standard. About 95% of everything is picked, um, and I use the like 0.71 uh, gauge uh, yellow or 0.70 gauge yellow. These are the Diodario versions of this, but I normally use the Tortex ones. Um, and yeah, on, I mean I, I'll finger pick for some small parts here and there. But yeah, mostly just play with a pick. It's punk rock, so. This is my pedal board. Um, I keep it pretty simple. Um, it's just the pedal train nano, um, and with the pedal train power supply that separates all the power between separate um, circuits or whatever, so that nothing's crossing. Uh, I have this tiny tune that just doesn't take up a ton of pedal board space. Um, it doesn't run out of batteries, so I have to plug it in every time. Uh, and I have the full tone OCD. I don't know exactly what model it is. Uh, that changes year to year, but I got it, I don't know, like six years ago. So whenever they were making it around then, that's when I got that. Um, and I have the decimator, the ISP Technologies decimator, and it just cuts the hum and feedback. Um, and I specifically have this decimator because we play in a really, really noisy practice space. It's just like, Tall ceilings and brick. It's really a piece of crap. It's it's everything sounds bad in there, um, and everything feeds back all the time. So I have to have that on all the time when we're practicing. But um, live, I I think I've only had it on one or two shows. It depends on the room and how compact and how it sounds on stage. Um, but yeah, I keep it pretty simple because I normally like to use amp overdrive, whatever drive channel the amp has that I'm playing through. I originally played through um, an Ampeg SVT up until about a week into this tour where it went out, it broke on stage once. I got it fixed the next day, and then the day after that it broke again. So I ditched that amp, but um, I really liked the drive channel on the Ampeg SVT, so I kept this pretty simple. I just added a little bit extra overdrive from the OCD, and that was kind of my total clean plus drive signal. Um, but yeah, now I, after the second time that that amp broke, I switched to the um, terror bass from Orange. I didn't want to mess with tube stuff anymore when we're on the road. Um, and I really like that drive channel, but I'm honestly still figuring it out. So um, yeah, I kind of keep it strictly at like five on the master and six on the gain. Um, that's what I'm working with right now, whether I settle into that after I can be home with it for a little while, I'm not sure. And I keep the EQ a little bit boost on the treble, a little bit of a boost on the bass, and I kind of scoop the mid a tiny bit. Um, and that's kind of as simple as it gets on that. Um, I really wanted the OB1 orange head, uh, but we, I, we were on the road and I needed a new head, so I had to kind of take whatever orange amp was available at the time. Um, and I couldn't find an OB-1, so I got the Terror, which is kind of similar in functionality. Um, so yeah, I mean, that's I, I, whether that stays the same after I kind of can sit with it for a while, it remains to be seen, but um, I really like how it sounds so far with this setup, so I've been kind of running with it. Hot Mulligan and us were sharing Hot Mulligan's cab, bass cab. It's an Emperor 2x15. Uh, 
um, with I think it can handle 600 watts. My my head is 500 watts uh, solid state uh, power. And um, when I play at home, I'm through an Ampeg uh, 8x12, right? No, 810, uh, 810 uh, Ampeg, like classic. With um, I upgraded the speakers so that they had more uh, power rating to them. But I really like how this uh, cab sounds with my setup too. So maybe I'll get one when I get home. So yeah, we play in Lurk. Uh, we have a record coming out, a full-length record later this year on Pure Noise Records. Right now we have an EP called Electroshock that's out everywhere. Um, it, Spotify, Apple Music, all that stuff, and you can buy uh, the vinyl copy from us or Pure Noise um, or some independent record shops, I'm sure. Um, and we'll be on tour later in the fall too. We got some stuff that we're figuring out now, and we'll be on the rest of this tour through the end of February with Waster Hot Mulligan and Grayscale.